Regarded by many historians as the oldest living civilization of Earth, India has traditionally been an agrarian country. All the parameters of Indian economic markets fluctuate in tune with agricultural activity. In a world where nothing is permanent except change, it is imperative that both farmer as well as farming should evolve and a quiet revolution has been taking place on the agricultural front. For quite some years, agriculture in India has been supported by the latest remote sensing data like soil moisture conditions, crop acreage and yield estimation, weather conditions, estimation of monsoon and watershed activity. In addition, the IRS and the INSAF systems also provide very important and useful data on the weather, which is of immense help during disaster management nationwide. The data provided by the IRS system is being used by the government agencies like NDMA, Department of Meteorology, Department of Forest, Department of Earth Sciences, and many more. IRS satellites so far have been designed to provide data in the visible and near infrared region of electromagnetic spectrum. The collection of data in these bands by the electro optic imaging sensors is hindered by the presence of clouds and fog, as the electromagnetic radiation in these wavelengths cannot penetrate the clouds and fog. India, being a tropical country, has a perennial cloud presence during the Kharif season, July, October, which is the prime monsoon period in the country. This seriously limits the visible and infrared data from satellites for any meaningful applications. This season is very important from the point of view of agricultural production, besides which, during this season, the country is also prone to disasters such as floods, cyclones, and storm surges. Moreover, the visible and near infrared data can only be obtained during daytime, as it depends on the sun's reflected radiation for data collection. This necessitates the use of microwave remote sensing instruments such as synthetic aperture radar, SAR, which has the innate capability of collecting data in day and night and all weather conditions, as it operates in microwave bands for which the atmosphere is transparent. With its known radar backscatter sensitivity to soil moisture and surface roughness, SAR has become an important component in many applications, either in a standalone mode or as a complement to electro-optical sensors and has been extensively used in areas such as agriculture, forestry, geology and hydrology. The Indian-made radar imaging satellite RISAT-1 is the 20th remote sensing satellite of the nation. A new class of remote sensing satellites, distinct from the established IRS class, has been developed by Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, as its first satellite imaging mission, using an active radar sensor system. RISAT-1 carries a multi-mode C-band synthetic aperture radar, SAR, as the sole payload. The design and development of SAR has been contributed by the Space Application Center. The RISAT mission is envisaged to augment the operational remote sensing program in the country, mainly enhancing agriculture and disaster management support related applications. The presence of synthetic aperture radar SAR, an active payload with 1,800 subsystems, will transmit and receive microwaves and increase the satellite complexity manifold. RISAT-1 is the first remote sensing satellite built by ISRO, carrying such a heavy, complex and versatile payload. The RISAT-1 SAR sensor is based on active phased array antenna technology which will provide required electronic agility for achieving multi-mode capability for ensuring both high resolution as well as wide swath operation. This state-of-the-art technology is expected to survive technological obsolescence for a long time to come and is upgradable to other frequency bands in succeeding missions. RISAT-1 
Shar will have electronic beam scanning to cover different regions with variable beam width from 2.9 degrees to 1.6 degrees to achieve pointing independent SWAT with better than 3 meter resolution and near constant radar cross section. More than 200 km SWAT is also possible with the agility offered by active phased array antenna of this sensor. Essentially, the active antenna, which is the heart of the payload, consists of a printed dual polarized radiating aperture, 576 transmit receive modules along with the necessary power supplies, as well as TR control units and 12 tile control units. The SAR payload has its own calibration network to characterize the performance of the end-to-end -end system on the ground as well as in orbit. RISAT-1 spacecraft mainframe bus is configured by deriving heritage from previous IRS missions as well as several mission-specific new subsystems. The prism-like shape of the satellite allows stowing of the three 2 meters by 2 meters active antenna panels around the triangular prism structure. Most of the spacecraft subsystems and the complete payload are integrated in the prism structure and the central cylinder. The solar panel and the rest of the spacecraft subsystems are mounted on the cuboid portion of the satellite. The satellite power system consists of two solar panels with high-efficiency multi-junction solar cells and 70 ampere hour capacity nickel hydrogen battery. The satellite has an onboard recorder with storage capability of 240 gigabits of data for storing the SAR data. The onboard data transmitter is capable of transmitting data at the rate of 640 megabits per second in X-band. In a non-operating condition, the active antenna looks at NADIV. Prior to operation, the spacecraft will be roll tilted by 36 degrees to enable viewing either the right or the left side of the flight track. The satellite will also have your steering capability to minimize Earth rotation effects. The data from SAR is formatted and fed to the RF transmitter. A solid state recorder, SSR, is part of the baseband data handling. The payload data can be transmitted either in real-time mode or in playback mode. The onboard data transmitter antenna also has the capability to steer the narrow antenna beam towards the ground station during data transmission, SC Hyderabad. It includes planning and development of various software and hardware systems for mission management by Spacecraft Control Center, SCC, at ISTRAC, Bangalore, ISTRO Satellite Center, ISAC, Bangalore, and Space Application Center, SAC, Ahmedabad, provide support for developing and operationalizing the mission and data product software. In addition, SAC has the responsibility of developing the methodology for the use of RISAT data for a variety of applications. Spacecraft Control Center, SCC, is responsible for tracking the satellite and carrying out mission operations. Using the existing ISTRAC telemetry, tracking and command network stations at Lucknow, Bangalore, Mauritius, and PR, mission operations, satellite health monitoring, health analysis, payload operation scheduling, and payload programming are planned to be carried out with necessary interfaces with NRSC to cater to user-driven payload programming requests. PSLV C-19 is the 21st flight of ISRO's Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. In this flight, the XL version of PSLV will be carrying six large strap-ons, each containing 12 tons of propellant. With a liftoff weight of 1,850 kgs, RISAT-1 is the heaviest satellite to be carried by PSLV. PSLV C-19 will be launched from the first launch pad of the Satish Dhawan Space Center, Shar Sriharikota. RISAT-1 will be orbiting in a circular polar sun-synchronous orbit with altitude of 536 kilometers, an orbit period of 95.49 minutes. The spacecraft will orbit the Earth 
14 times per day. Repetitivity of the orbit will be 25 days. The solar array of RISAT-1 will generate 1,250 watts of power and the life of the spacecraft will be around 5 years. Given the high quality SAR data that will be disseminated from the RISAT-1 on a routine basis, there are a lot of expectations riding on it. The launch of the satellite is expected to enable accurate forecasting of agricultural produce, especially the Kharif crop, and herald greater accuracy in planning, thus impacting lives across the nation. Small wonder then that all eyes are on the launch of this satellite.